Wembley Stadium for the Charity Shield, the first trophy of the new season traditionally contested by the two teams that triumphed back in May. Blackburn Rovers were the champions, but the FA Carling Premiership only decided in the last few dramatic moments. I don't believe any of this, it's just too much like a fairy story. They're 2-1 down and they're embracing. They've lost here, but they are champions. Everton were the FA Cup winners, one goal deciding the final against Manchester United. Still Matt Jackson. From Stewart and then in right out. Well, it's only 12 weeks since Dave Watson lifted the cup, but the Littlewoods Pools FA Charity Shield is the curtain raiser to a new season. A showpiece occasion that offers Blackburn and Everton the chance to put another trophy on the mantelpiece. Our match commentators are Trevor Brooking and Barry Davis. Whatever the outcome, it's celebration time for the man whose 34 goals led Blackburn to the title. Alan Shearer is 25 years old today. And the man whose header won the cup for Everton, Paul Rideout, he's 31 years old tomorrow. As for the teams, well, international calls claim a couple of Blackburn regulars. Nice, though, to see Kevin Gallagher back after twice breaking his right leg. And the absence of the combative Colin Hendry brings an old and interesting role for Chris Sutton. Yes, of course, Blackburn filled in last year with Tony Gow for a season. Uh, then Ian Pearce came in and did very well. But Chris Sutton started off uh, his career at Norwich as a defender, and I'm sure he'll look quite as accomplished uh, as he did in those younger days when he reverts back to his uh, defensive role this afternoon. Everton field eight of their cup final lineup with the captain, Dave Watson, who was man of the match at the final, starting his comeback from a foot operation by having a place on the bench. Vinny Samways gets a chance, as does 20-year-old Tony Grant, whose second full appearance for the club comes at Wembley. Well, of course, uh, not any appearance from their two uh, recent signings. We say signings, Kanchelskis we're not sure about. Craig Short as well in defence, uh, so it gives an opportunity for Gary Ablett to uh, show his versatility. And it looks like a, a sort of fairly uh, accomplished uh, midfield. Five people in there, really all breaking, I'm sure. Tony Grant and Vinnie Samways in particular to join Paul Rideout, who's going to start off up front by himself. Well, it's an interesting thought. Where does the director of football for Blackburn sit? No surprise, of course, he's on the bench. Joe Royal and Willie Donachy. Looking to build on their exploits from last May. The referee is Dermot Gallagher from Oxfordshire. His two linesmen, Dave Crick of Surrey and Tony Bates of Staffordshire, with the fourth official, Graham Cole from Hertfordshire. So the holders of the two major domestic trophies enter a season which will make a sizeable hole in two summers. But it's a season keenly anticipated for many reasons, and a pleasing start now would certainly be welcome. Last year there wasn't too much charity around in this fixture, and it proved to be a, a rather unhappy omen. Neville Southall, starting where he started in the cup final. As the man will be trying to beat him today. Partly now with his old compatriot, Mike Newell. Bright sunshine. The forecast has said it wouldn't be quite so warm. And it's certainly warm at Wembley. There's clearance by Tim Flowers. Shearer is a good header by Newell. Offside given against Ripley. First run of a winger brought to an abrupt end by a waving linesman. And the ball's played, I think is almost level and a bit unlucky there, I would have thought, Blackburn. Just in time, Kenner. Played nine games in the uh, 
Championship at the end of the season, having come from Southampton. No, offside. Yeah, the great thing about quite a few of the sign-ins, uh, Kenny Dalglish, is that uh, yeah, they, we've got players who can play in various positions. Kenner can play in both full-back positions and both flank uh, as an attacking midfielder if need be, so very useful. Well, I don't think David Batley's going to make himself too popular there with the Everton supporters, unnecessary. Mm, it's warm enough without all that. Limpar and Batty, the challenge was from behind, and then Batty went on to play the ball. Gets a moment in the shade, which for him and any other player will be welcome. We understand the temperature down on the pitch is in the high 90s. Well, he's going to have a bear, isn't he, on the, the pace of the match at this early stage of the season. You always use this as a, a warmer <laughs> upper game, and certainly um, you know, with uh, probably six or seven pre-season matches behind you already, you just need this sort of match to sharpen you up, but in these temperatures it's going to be done in bursts. So they will tell us later in the season that they play too much football. We've already had uh, the start of the competition to join the, the rich and mighty. Okay, having to work hard at the start here. There's an offside flag. And indeed, we've already had the start of the British Challenge in Europe. And here we are. So no decision in Test cricket. Athletics at world level taking place. Plenty of goals still to come. Same ways. Horn is down the middle. The best of moments to ride out to stand on the ball. And a real jump to reclaim by Horn. Horn and Sherwood, and Sherwood better be very careful indeed. Missed six games last season, Sherwood, and they were all because of suspension. Quite a contest going on in the middle of the field. It was not a good challenge by Horn, but all the way through here, there was a hand in by Horn and a bit of a rollover. All incredibly juvenile. And had wrestling in the middle of a football match. Parkinson. Oof. A bit too close for comfort, but uh, Southall knew where it was going. Mike Newell, who looked for a moment as though he was going to test him. Good speculative shot. It uh, was always, I think, just going over the crossbar, but good one with the left foot. Uh, just takes and distracts everyone away from that midfield battle that's going on with Sherwood and Batty against Horn and Parkinson. A few biting tackles, I suppose the charity shield isn't the ideal name for this particular game in the opening uh, 15 minutes. Horn. Batty in the way. Unsworth challenge. Play continues, referee has a quick look at the injured party. He was... Uh, Mike Newell. Oh dear, oh dear, Samways now. And the referee shows Samways the yellow card. Well, he had to show somebody a card sooner or later, and it's a little surprising. Perhaps he feels that charitable ought to be his action. Horn, <laughs> Limpar left side. Samways is in the middle, so is right out. This is Hitchcliffe. Horn. Grant. And again. Challenge really over eager. And this time. The yellow card is shown to Gallagher, who looks a little surprised, and it is uh, ironic with some of the challenges we've seen. That was an impetuous challenge, but the two players booked have been among the more innocent. 
I couldn't agree more. The two most innoxious challenges from Gallagher and now Samways have both ended up with a yellow card. On. On again, nice turn away from Batty, looking for Grant. This young man will have enjoyed his start, though. The cool head just couldn't quite make the contact he wanted here, though. He's filling a job wide on the right, Tony Grant. Uh, I think he'd be happier as a creative... Uh, Midfield and a pass that have been more central, but uh, of course no Kanchelskis and uh, no Graham Stewart who could often play wide on the right. So he's doing a good job, and at the moment Everton having more of the play, uh, even if, though it is a bit more disjointed than we would like. Stewart likely to be back in a couple of weeks. On the injured list. It's one of the changes from the Cup final side: Dave Watson, of course, and Matt Jackson. Duncan Ferguson wouldn't have been available because he was with the uh, Scotland squad. He wanted a sub in the cup final. But uh, he had to put out of that squad because of the groin strain. Batty. again Mike Anna getting him out of trouble They're briefly on the wrong side of his man Hinchcliffe good try by Rideout and the beating of Chris Sutton there he springs well Rideout because he if you see him sort of uh, dressed in his casual wear, he's not that tall, but he just jumps and hangs above Sutton and uh, just couldn't quite keep it down below that crossbar. But he does time it well, gets up before the defender Sutton is able to. Sutton will know all about that, getting above defenders, but this time he's on the receiving end. Chest by Sherwood, he pierced his head up. Gallagher, another good tackle by Horn, but it was simply a question of timing. Sherwood, Shearer, Southall getting away with the rather poor clearance. Ripley, three waiting for the cross. It was met by Barrett, only for the so. Just wouldn't come down for him. Well, we passed the halfway point of the first half. and hopes it will get better, but the feeling at the moment is it's a shame we can't start all over again. It's a 
pretty close run thing as far as uh, Everton are concerned. Bit of a wild slice clearance from Horn, first of all, and it was Unsworth there who got back and made the save in tackle against Tim Sherwood. Grant. Same way loses out to Batty. This is Sutton. Ripley. Newell. Shearer far side, nobody filling the hole in the middle. It's a good challenge by Adlett. <laughs> Kenner is the player who's gone down and the ball immediately put out of play so he can receive some attention. Referee now will ask him whether he requires a trainer. And if he does, the treatment, if possible, should be off the pitch. A new directive this season. They were very quick to see that he'd gone down uncomfortably. He's turned something over, hasn't he? It wasn't a kick or anything from Anders Lindbrough. Just turned awkwardly. Blackburn down to 10 for the moment. That's Ray Harford who's on his feet. Speculative. Not a bad effort. Billy Samway's running out wide. That was the pass to the reverse one. Without a recognised right back at the moment, you've got to make it tell. That was a long way out. Looks as if uh, Anders Limpar's beat the same hairdresser as Tim Sherwood and Kevin Gallagher, Jeff Kenner, there's a few of them at their lock shoe. One by Unsworth. And the yellow card is shown as we look at uh, Mark Atkins as the probable substitute. This is the reverse angle of why uh, Tim Sherwood was booked. Could have gone down for tree felling. And it is to be Mark Atkins, as Jeff Kenner is taken by the stretcher to the dressing room. It's an unfortunate start for him, and indeed for Blackburn, and he'd been one of their better players. of Jeff Kenner as you can see from the way he went down the problem is a right ankle and he's gone to have an x-ray to see if there's anything more than just the twist and sprain that's a good challenge things couldn't quite get away Samways right out well nodded down by Batty but what a relief at the other end to see that, that man Mark Atkins actually run beyond the strikers and, and take a chance everyone's been sort of staying goal side and it's been a stalemate you've got to have midfield people going beyond the front men and, and trying to occupy the central defenders and open them up he didn't make the most of it hasn't quite got the pace but at least he was willing to do it Scored some useful goals last season. Six of them coming forward from midfield. This is Shearer. Newell is the man to find. Good save. Didn't get to Newell. It went to Sherwood, and Sherwood didn't accept the opportunity. Neville Southall falling on it, just as those behind his goal with Blackburn colours were about to shout goal. Hunsworth caught out. Shearer pulled it back. Ablett got half a touch to it. In came uh, Sherwood. Good stop. Should have scored there, Tim Sherwood. Good run by Shearer. Hunsworth committed himself, sold him. He got rode around. And then as the cross came in, Ablett on his weaker right foot missed the ball. Tim Sherwood, although stretching, 
only needed a decent contact and from that distance Neville Southall wouldn't have had a chance so a bit of an escape there for Everton now Hinchcliffe at the other end Oh, goodness me, Flowers. Oh, well, may he smile. But he won't want that replayed too often. It was, it was actually, I think, too simple for him. Just got across, covered it comfortably, and then it spun away. Unfortunately for him, it was the right side of the post, which was the left side from his point of view. On. Unsworth. Atkins. Offside Shearer. It's now the uh, time that Mr. Gallagher has allowed for stoppages. Look how everyone's running away from the midfield, man. It used to be a time when forwards, one would go beyond the defender and one would drop short and then you could play those little triangles that at the moment is, is missing from this opening 45 minutes. It's extraordinary you should have to make such an observation at this level. Uh, tends to instruct schoolboys, don't everybody run away from the ball. You have to make the point it's uh, you know, a charity shield, the players are still getting their match fitness, but it, it's the basic pattern of play that's more concerning. Play by Pierce. Good applause. The whistle at the end of the half. One wonders for what reason. Sherwood having the best opportunity of the first 45 minutes. Southall dropping on the ball to deny him. It's a blank score sheet. We really didn't see much football in the first half of this charity shield. Dave Watson on as a substitute for Everton. The referee prepares to get the second half of this Littlewoods Pools FA Charity Shield underway. Watson on in place of Tony Grant. Adlett has moved to the left back position, which presumably pushes Hinchcliffe forward, and Limpar indeed already appearing on the right side. So they're back more to their cup final permutation. Yes, young Tony Grant has done nothing wrong, uh, but uh, Andy Hinchcliffe can play left side midfield or left back. He's gone into the midfield area. Gary Ablett uh, is a left back. I still think his best position is central defence, but it was a bit lopsided with Unsworth and Ablett both left footers in the first half. And of course, David Watson, without sort of any pre season games, will need this second half to get some of that match fitness ready for the new season. Season for Everton, which opens against Chelsea. Put it in company. Saturday. And Stamford Bridge. To renew rivalries, uh, Watson with a certain Mark Hughes. We met, of course, in the Cup final last year. Here's Hinchcliffe. Is Everton's way. Well, it's not Everton's way, it's Blackburn's way. I think the offside flag had gone up a little bit earlier. It was a bit late being given, though, and uh, certainly right out, though, at the moment, still up there by himself. And I think Everton, having lost the last 10 minutes of that opening period, will need to, to get forward and join him much quicker than they were doing. Oh, he's got Amakachi on the bench who could bring on as well, Joe Royal. 
This is now a 14-a-side game. Three substitutes allowed. On this occasion, to be chosen from five. Seventy-third match in total for the Charity Shield. Twenty-four club names on the shield. They include uh, Everton and Blackburn. Blackburn winning just once. Everton seven times outright and once shared with Liverpool. And some other winners too. The professionals used to play the amateurs. Six matches. Professionals winning out 4-2, but uh, they were twice beaten by six goals, so uh, possibly brought an end to that. It's David Batty continuing in the right-back position. Balaka. Balaka again, neatly done. Shearer comes in, there was a break on the left side, but for some reason Stuart Ripley was very reluctant to get forward there on the left side. Good one over the top, just doesn't quite put Limpar in. Yeah, Limpar nearly got behind Lasso, but he covered well Lasso. At the other end, uh, Kevin Gallagher a little bit happier down that right-hand flank. He and Ripley, of course, uh, were on the other side in the first half, but Ripley's moved to the left and Kevin Gallagher now coming on the right. And he is more naturally right-footed because uh, neither of them really like to play down the left side and uh, Jason Wilcox still recovering from injury himself would be the natural left of the normally. So, almost got away with a pretty outrageous dummy then. The ball just didn't run quite far enough for him. Here's Shearer. Newell and Gallagher in the middle. Nobody there. Hinchcliffe, Samways. Now he's got three options. Right out left is the best. He decides. Limpar far side. Could have been nasty. But Lars grabbed it well. And not really enough made of the move. Seamless, so starting to take people on in the second period, too. Good play by Newell. Atkins could have a pop. And the goalkeepers are now being employed. In the 12th minute of the second half. Match watched by a crowd of 40,145. Won't include those. This is Royal and Donachy. And the Jimmy Gabriel on the right. Makes it the smallest crowd since the match came to Wembley in 1974. Here's Samways. Oh! But the crowd have got a goal in an unlikely fashion. Billy Samways almost looks a little embarrassed by it. Certainly, Tim Flowers has got a bit of a ricochet because of the challenge. And Everton lead. Well, he wasn't shooting, don't worry about that. He, he was put under pressure, was caught in two minds, and he just toe-ended it and it's flew into the far corner. I don't think Tim Flowers had much chance. A looping shot in the end, and somehow or other we've managed to get the ball in the net, not always by intent, and let's see if this does make it a much more entertaining remaining of the game. So I must have some sympathy for Tim Flowers. He could have done without that. Just toe poke there. And it got a curl, and it just crept in inside the far post. Sympathy with Mr. Flowers. And Samways on the score sheet for Everton.
Lee Harvard's got a decision now as to whether he changes his pattern because Chris Sutton playing at the back so far. He could bring on a defender such as Nicky Marker who's still on the bench and, and push Sutton up and uh, to renew his partnership with Alan Shearer. Perhaps that is an option in the next few minutes he might be thinking about. Sutton, Batty, Pierce. So he has been used much more as an instigator of attacks in the second half. Ripley couldn't get it through to him right now. Shearer up. So is Newell. So is Gallagher. And so takes on Barrett. That was good defending, Earl Barrett. Held up two players. Ripley was inside, but so tried to go outside and got a good block on the cross. Shearer. Well, he kept his eye on the ball, but he couldn't make the shot accurate. He's away not looking too happily at Hinchcliffe. The determination here from the Blackburn captain. He was well white. Yes, Ripley, Shearer, Sherwood. Snackles miss kick. At least he's got it into space. Good spell this though from Blackburn. Atkins. Ripley. Seeing more and more of Ripley coming inside. He turns well enough, loses his marker, then just panics, thinks he has to rush it. Free kick. And uh, Neville Southall. Still with a clean sheet. Had seven in the last eight games. At the back end of last season. There's Bobby Mims. Back there, number two. Limpa. Barrett. Limpa again. Right out is the only attacker. Next player is a good 40 yards away. Well, perhaps 30. Here's Everton, who having gone ahead, there's no need to change their system or bring Amakachi on at this stage because uh, they've got their lead. They can afford to keep their five men in midfield, but it does mean that, again, as you said, right out is their only option. So it's up to Blackburn to take the game to Everton and try and get this equaliser but at the moment Everton defended well enough and look as if they're coping okay get off. just under 19 minutes for Blackburn to save the day Ablett Hinchcliffe up on the win met by Lasso. Given away by Gallagher. Samways. Termination from right out. From Stiff. Horn. Promising this for Everton. Limpa. Offside. Took too long to come back to the middle and right out. Perhaps he's making that very point. 
good bit of passing by Everton, though. Good to see him thread it through the midfield, spread play, and uh, just try and create that opening. On. Samways. Yes. Final by Limpa. Shearer is far post. Now moving a bit towards the centre. They're still having too much to do. And we got a bit cross about it, I think. is rightly booked for the challenge on Barrett, which was wild and ill-tempered after Barrett had got the better of him. Not before time, I think, Graham was so. Uh, he's had three or four of these lunges after tackle right down the Achilles of Earl Barrett. No question, a yellow card was merited. Samway's goal still divides the teams. This is how he got it, in curious fashion, the challenge by Pierce, the curl on the ball, leaving Tim Flowers stranded. Scorer fortunate, goalkeeper unlucky. Down to Atkins, well, he took two touches to bring it onto his right foot and was closed down as a result. Welcome to the game, Nicky Marker. Got the ball and Parkinson at exactly the same time. Unsworth, but the wrong way, and it's a corner. Everton end in sunshine, the Blackburn end in shadow. Makel. Pierce not too far away from it. Atkins. Limpa took it down superbly. Here's Horn. Only really one pass on and he just had to hold on to the ball. Nice chest comes down to Atkins. Parkinson took it away. Hinchcliffe dummies to go, and Michael dispossesses him briefly. Ablett. Building the lily a little bit, it's given away now. Batty. Chased by Samways. Atkins. Shearer. No foul. Actually, if his first touch of control had been better there, he, he would have been clear. It, it, so Watson just went towards Sutton, it went over the top of him, and as he tried to take it on his chest and turn with it, he knocked it back in and enabled Watson to get the tackle. The serve. Thank you, Everton supporters there, we'll scramble to collect it. Plenty of youngsters in the crowd. Quite an expensive season for supporters who want to follow these teams in Europe. Get up, get up. 
Watson said it's mine. It's turned away by Hinchliffe in the end. Late challenge by Sutton. Sutton gets the flick. That's half by Unsworth. Bit of climbing. And it's a free kick to Blackburn. Pressure showing on Everton faces. Five minutes left. Shearer, but straight into the arms of Southall. They're a long way out, isn't it? Neville Southall standing that side. He hasn't got a hat on either, has he? A similar position to where Tim Flowers one bounced off his chest. But no problems there with Neville Southall. Michael, Batty, <laughs> dive in by Hinchcliffe. Shearer, Sutton is up, Atkins is up. No foul, says the referee, and Shearer doesn't quite believe the referee's opinion. And he's joined by several others from Blackburn Rovers, but Mr Gallagher's not going to change his mind. Well, it was a bit of a clumsy challenge from Dave Watson. He's got away from the first tackle. Alan Shearer is waiting for the contact. There is a slight contact. He goes down, I have to say, looking for the penalty. But when you do lunge in like that... I've definitely... I've seen penalties given for that, definitely. I, mean, I can understand them looking to green. I think Dave Watson was a bit reckless just to make any sort of contact at all. But uh, it's not given. The referee's decision is final, and the score... Is still 1 0. So the denial of a penalty denies for the moment at least a penalty competition. Just over a minute and a half left. That's a bit of stoppage time. Yes, sir. As ever with the British game, there's no lack of effort. And trying all they can to get back. Everton supporters want the final whistle. Makel, Sutton. Just won by David Unsworth. Inside the last minute on our watch. Michael. Lusseau. Oh, he's away. Hinchliffe's header. And Limpa misjudged it. He felt Lusseau made a back, but the referee has given the free kick. Parks joining Ray Harford on his feet. Driven free kick met by Paul Rydell. Now playing stoppage time. Referee looked at his watch once. And Neville Southall in no hurry at all to retrieve the ball. I mean, he's not been the best of games, I have to say, but... Uh... Psychologically, it'd be good for Everton to have beaten the champions, Blackburn, because if you look at their bench, uh, you know, Dave Watson came on at half-time, but you've got Amakachi, Ebrill and Jackson still sitting there, the likes of Craig Short and then Penchelskis, if the deal ever gets completed, 
and then Graham Stewart, Duncan Ferguson. It's quite a solid-looking squad now. A lot of options for Joe Roll. I don't think he's got any worries about relegation as he had last season, whereas Blackburn perhaps not quite as fluent as at times last season, and, and they've got to get better. To Everton, the victory. To Vinnie Samways, the goal. Although he would not, I'm sure, tell you that that's quite what he intended. A hopeful poke that curled in past Tim Flowers. And Alan Shearer feeling that he should have had the opportunity from the penalty spot to wipe that goal out as he was challenged by Dave Watson. But the referee thought otherwise, and one goal sufficeth for Everton as it did in the FA Cup final. The losers go first. Tim Sherwood will be hoping for better fortune in the matches to come in Europe, and we wish them well in that. Ian Pierce there, who made the challenge on uh, Samways. Still don't know whether he actually made contact with the ball, though. Plenty for some old campaigners to talk about. Unlucky Tim Flowers. Had a worrying moment in the first half, but uh, could do very little about the one that beat him. Winning is a nice habit, and so is collecting trophies. And Dave Watson climbs the Wembley steps again as the winning captain. Uh, on this occasion, he only played for half the match. There, the trophy awaits him. 22nd playing of this match at Wembley. And Everton win it for the eighth time outright. They once shared it with Liverpool. A good start to the season for Joe Royal's men from Goodison Park. One trophy on the mantel shelf already. Presentation by uh, James Swenson Taylor, the group board director of the Littlewoods organization. Joe, many congratulations. Uh, two Wembley visits as the Everton manager and two wins. Not bad. Great start. It looked a long way off, um, certainly last November when I joined, but uh, it's been quite lucky again to like Wembley. What did you think of the game? Traditional pre-season game, really. Never really got to full tempo, although it was very passionate. Um, very, very hot out there. It was always going to be hard for the players to maintain the pace. Um, all you can say is at the end that we scored the goal that mattered. One very controversial moment, uh, Dave Watson appeared to bring down Alan Shearer. If you'd been refereeing, refereeing, would you have given the penalty? Well, I don't know, I wasn't refereeing, and I think we have to be a, li a little bit fair to referees here. Um, I think it looked a possible penalty, but, you know, as I said to, to Alan after the game, he's going to have to be a little bit fair and say that sometimes if you try and manipulate situations, they'll go against the other side. And uh, he is England's top player, there's no doubt about that, and I'm full of admiration. But at times he does try and manipulate situations for himself. How do you describe uh, the mood in the, the Blackburn Rovers camp as you go into a new season, given what you achieved last season? <clears throat> well, I'd say it's about similar to last season. Uh, we've had a, probably a slightly better pre-season. Uh, I don't think we won a game last year um, coming into the league programme. But uh, we've done quite well this year. Uh, up until today, we hadn't lost a game. So, uh, but we lost here last year and, and went on to win the league. So hopefully we can uh, repeat that. Do you think it will be harder to retain the championship than it was to win it? Well, it was incredibly hard to win it. I certainly felt it at the time. But um, it's going to be harder if uh, you know 
extremely hard, I think, for us to, to retain it. But uh, we'll just do what we did last year, which is approach every game the same way, positively, give our best and, and hope it's good enough. Just tell us about the goal. Um, you meant to do it completely? Well, it's a bit of lap as well because uh, I was getting a bit tired getting into the corner and I looked across and I couldn't see anyone in there and I just hit it. So, uh, lucky enough it went in the far corner, but I mean, I've got to say there was a bit of lack along the way as well. So, one goal, enough for Everton again as it was in the cup final here three months ago. But uh, Trevor, we've got to ask first of all, why was the match so poor? I think it was a fair indication the first 20 minutes. Uh, there were so many tackles going, it was almost like a battlefield, wasn't there? Uh, no space at all for anyone to, to put their foot on the ball. And I think, uh, you know, if you look at the Everton midfield, I mean, they've got five men, two, two out wide. They, they started, didn't they, with Grant and Limpi out wide, and Vinnie Samway's trying to join right out. But the two tacklers, Barry Horn and Joe Parkinson, I wouldn't fancy uh, <laughs> trying to get the ball down with them, snapping at your heels. And that was a problem. And of course, then directly against them for Blackburn was David Batty and Tim Sherwood and, and, and they got involved and got quite heated and, and so there were a few challenges that I thought the referee could have sort of pinned down earlier with a yellow card or so and in the end Vinnie Samways and Kevin Gallagher got bookings for mm. two tackles that I didn't think were as bad as what had gone before. Yeah, so the game was rather smothered in midfield but Everton's five would seem as though Joe Royal got it right because his team won. Well, I think when Duncan Ferguson doesn't play, as they did sort of the latter part of last season, and they did well, they play this system. Uh, it relies a lot on people breaking from midfield, and it's a hard job for Paul Ryder. I mean, I wouldn't think he would fancy and relish it doing too much during the season up there by himself. Uh, but, of course, they're very dangerous at set pieces, uh, and, of course, a little bit of fortune about the goal today. But it does rely on people breaking. Uh, sometimes, more often than not, it was Limpar, sometimes somebody from the back. But when they did break, they found themselves outnumbered. Ride out was the only option. So they didn't create that much apart from the goal. And of course, the defence is very tight and was at the tail end of last season. And that means that they can win goals, uh, games with just the odd goal. Yeah, Just the odd goal. Vinny Samways has admitted that there was an element of luck about it. You're in no doubt, are you? Well, it was very lucky, wasn't it? I mean, it was one of those, it was bouncing up and, and as an attacker, you, whether you're crossing or shooting, you want it to drop down a bit. But then he got closed down by Ian Pearce and, and almost sort of got hurried into doing something and it looked like a toe-ender to me. He went through then Ian Pearce's legs, I don't think he got a touch, and just looped in beyond poor old Tim Flowers. And, and once it left his foot and we were right behind it, you thought that's going to end up in the back of the net off the post. What are we to make of Blackburn? Because they are carrying the flag in the, the Champions Cup this season and... Uh... There wasn't a lot of confidence for them today, was there? No, they weren't at their best. I think uh, when they're playing well, they, they do get the ball out wide to, to the wide people. Today it was sort of Stuart Ripley and, and Kevin Gallagher. Kevin played more often than not on the left-hand side as Jason Wilcox is injured, but he's not naturally left-footed and, and they didn't get it out to them early enough. The two fullbacks then liked to get forward. Graham Lasso did a bit second half, but they weren't getting the quality crosses into the likes of Shearer and Newell. Although, of course, uh, they need Chris Sutton as well, moved up from the back as, as quick as possible to partner him. Yeah. Penalty? I think so. It's one of those he enticed the defender in. Dave Watson hasn't had that many games, and I think he, he did touch him. Alan Shearer, quality forward, waiting for that touch to go down for the penalty, but he didn't get it, and the score line was 1-0. OK, thanks so much, Trevor. Well, the Premier League kicks off next Saturday after the most amazing summer of transfers. Some £87 million has changed hands, and you may appreciate a little reminder of just who's gone where. I got my mind set on you. I got my mind set.
so some familiar faces will be appearing in different club colours next season. Match of the day is set to bring you all the action from the Premier League. We've four programmes in the first 12 days of the season, starting, of course, with the opening matches next Saturday. For now, from Wembley, good night.